Running aground is usually a sailor's worst fear, but in the Netherlands, it's the goal. So why do the Dutch keep running aground, and why do they seem to like it so much? Well, we went on a multi-day sailing expedition to find out. There was three of us on board. Hoob is the captain and the only real Dutch person on the ship. Aladino is the first mate, and also my husband. And that's me, steering the boat with the sunglasses. Oh, and of course, this is Maud, a 13-meter traditional Dutch sailing ship and our home base for the next several days. Let the adventures begin. We were heading up to the Wadden Sea. This shallow and tidal sea up in the north of the Netherlands is a very tricky place for most boaters. Strong tidal currents mean you have to carefully time your passage. And to make matters worse, the Wadden Sea is exceptionally shallow. At low tide, a lot of it simply turns to sand. On a normal sailboat with a keel, the combination of very shallow tidal water and constantly shifting sandbanks can quickly get you into trouble. But Maud is built differently, and Hoob was about to show us why. We'll go to the shallow waters and we'll ground the boat and there we stay the night. To get to our anchorage, we were taking a route that is actually so shallow the chart doesn't even show it as water. It would have been impossible on our boat, but on Maud it was no problem. Maud is a Lemster Ark, a traditional Dutch design with a flat bottom and a very shallow draft, designed to slip through even the shallowest of waters. And this flat bottom would come in handy once we found our beach for the night. The concept is simple. Approach the beach a little while after high tide and keep going until you hit the bottom. Then throw your anchor overboard and wait. This is the real beauty of sailing in the Wadden Sea on a traditional boat. No dinghy needed, and you can walk to town. Going aground is normally something that Aladino and I avoid at all costs. But the Dutch have taken advantage of their natural environment, and have built boats perfectly suited to it. These traditional Dutch boats can happily go where even the charts don't dare, and then nose right up onto the beach, dry out without any worries, and allow their crew to walk ashore. And it's so much fun that drying out has become a very popular activity in the Netherlands. Beached crew members might have fires on the sandbank, or look for mussels, or simply go for a walk around the islands. And the next day, when the tide is high, you can just sail away once again. Nearly. Yeah, mooi genoeg. Fine, very fine. Um, engine and anchor. anchor. 
You do the anger. Okay, yeah. I do the engine. Okay. sail over through the Vliestroom to Vlieland and uh, but before we leave we'll go a detour and to the banks where the sea dogs are laying normally. Sea dogs is a literal translation from Dutch, zeehons or seals in English. The Wadensee is quite famous for seals and they apparently like to relax on one particular sandbar. The seals hung out on the sandbar as several large sailboats drifted past in the very shallow water just behind them. We watched them for a while, but it was soon time to catch the tide to our next anchorage. <laughs> We're on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Are we parked for the night? We make our own. We make our own ditch. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit deeper. Oh, oh yeah? yeah. The color oh, looks good here. Yeah. Ten We're... centimeters we have now. Oh wow. Oh. oh. Practically right. the depths of the ocean. <laughs> Around here, yeah. <laughs> So we're going to make it in and then we're going to purposefully ground ourselves somewhere closer so to shore. Do you want to continue in this deeper canal or we go to land? No. I go straight? That's okay. Land. It's, it's okay. We have a road that slow. And you'll see what we hit. Okay, now I think we're well and truly parked. <laughs> This has to be our place. Look, look. Here we are! Welcome home. Welcome home. Stop the noise. Back. Look, seashells. <laughs> yeah, you can watch the underwater world go by. Um, we'll probably stay here, mm -hmm. so we drop the big anchor. Okay. You will do it on? Sure. Okay. Port or starboard? On st oh, uh, port. The Dutch don't take anchoring too seriously. A bit of rope, an anchor tossed off the bow, good enough. Anything more isn't necessary when every holding ground is a good holding ground, and most of the time there's no danger of drifting at all. Slowly, the water retreated, although we discovered we were actually in a bit of a strange place this time. We were right on the edge of a deeper channel. On the port side of the boat, there was enough water to swim in, whereas the starboard side was about to become completely dry. That would become interesting later. For now, the water breathed out and then breathed back in. The 
water has now risen. It's amazing how quickly the water falls and rises here. You can actually watch the currents come in and out, which is quite a fascinating thing to watch from the boat. But it's now evening and we have this beautiful sort of hazy horizon. The Dutch have a really nice word for it when it's sort of hazy on the water. They call it sea smoke. How do you say it, Hoob, in Dutch? Zeerook. Zeerook something like that. Sea smoke, which I think is a nice word for it. And we might actually move the boat before the evening really settles in now that we have enough water to do so, just because when we dried out, the boat was at a little bit of an angle, less comfortable. So maybe we'll move it to a flatter spot. But we were getting comfortable, so we didn't move the boat right away. Aladino made a delicious pasta and we sat back to enjoy the incredibly peaceful scene. <laughs> what have we got for dinner, Dini? Um, pasta fresca with pesto and some cherry tomatoes. Delicious. And what do you think of this view behind you? It's pretty cool how the horizon blends with the sky. It's all one. It's all yeah. one. All the birds. Yes, the birds following the fishing boat. That's quite something. Amazing. came so close to the boat, didn't he? Yeah. That was crazy. Spectacle. We got some good close-ups though because of it, but our pasta got interrupted. Yeah. How is the pasta, Aladino? It's pretty good. Yeah? The flea lamp speciality. I haven't even tried it yet. I'm looking forward to it. I gotta put the camera down. The fishing boat came in for his close-up right when we were about to eat. Hoob called the boat up on the VHF, but all was good. We weren't in their way and they just wanted to get close to the deeper channel. They made several more passes as the light dimmed, and it was actually quite spectacular. The next morning, we had to go home, but unfortunately, there was a bit of traffic. This is the entrance to a lock in the Netherlands. The amount of boats, all vying for position, getting so close to each other, is quite stressful seeming to the foreigner, I tell you. We're taking it easy. Hey, Hoob. Yeah, we're it's stressful for a Dutchman too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I bide my time. Yeah. We're in no rush. They're all squeezing in. There's a bridge first. You have to go through the bridge. And then there's another little holding area. And then there's the lock. <laughs> what do you think of all this, Saladino? Holy moly. Holy moly is correct. At least we're intimidating. <laughs> we are intimidating on a big steel Lemsterak. No way we can all fit in the lock. So it's also going to be a chicken race to get into the lock. I don't get this. I don't, I don't know. There's even a boat named Fairplay, but it doesn't, doesn't seem like it because mm -hmm. we were like the second boat entering here, but then it's the first one who goes. Mm -hmm. not the, not the oh yeah, queuing is not a thing. It's whoever yeah, exactly, can push in first. Exactly. We 
we made it in the lock after yeah literally two hours <laughs> we held back we didn't want to get caught up yeah that was crazy We finally made it, and from there it was a perfect course towards home waters. This is boating like I've never experienced it before. A hybrid of water and land, a sailboat without a keel, a cockpit that's more like a porch than a cramped footwell. It's comfortable sailing, peaceful sailing, sailing that's perfectly custom designed for its surroundings. In my rocky and deep home waters of BC, there's no way this kind of sailing would work, but that made it all the more special to experience it here, in the land where the sea is as shallow as the land is flat. Thank you, Hoop. Thank you, Maud, for another beautiful adventure. And thank you to you for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please let us know what you thought in the comments below. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel for a new video every Friday. An extra big thanks to our patrons for making all of these episodes possible. For real-time updates every single Tuesday, you can subscribe to Patreon for as little as $1 or $2 a month. And an extra, extra big thanks to these folks who go the extra mile every week and every month to make sure that Magic Carpet keeps being produced. We'll see you all next Friday.